My name is Julie Pearson, Little Thunder. Today is Monday, October 24th, 2016, and I'm interviewing Danette Daniels for the Cowboy in Every County interview series sponsored by the Oklahoma Oral History Research Program at Oklahoma State University. Danette, you got your bachelor's degree from OSU in family relations and child development. You also got a master's degree in that same area. You uh, have worked in the field of prevention for about 20, 18 years, mm -hmm. and you are currently um, the owner of the Waterbird Gallery here in Pahaska. So I look forward to hearing more about your life, your OSU memories, and some of the wonderful items you have here in the gallery. Great. Um, where were you born and where did you grow up? I was born and raised in Fairfax, Oklahoma, on the Osage Reservation. I uh, was born on March the 14th, 1963. How about your folks? What did they do for a living? Well, my dad, uh, he's a full-blood Osage. He had a ranch and a farm, and he also worked for the U.S. Postal Services. And my mother, uh, she was a homemaker for many years, and then she also um, went back to school at Oklahoma State University and received her bachelor's degree in, uh, in corrections. And mm -hmm. I was also raised by my grandparents who were both full-blood uh, Osage people, Rosemary and Anthony Daniels. Wonderful. Now, your mom wasn't in school at the same time as you, by any chance? No, she wasn't. I think she went back to school when I was about about 12 or 13. Okay. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about your, um, you know, your relationship with your grandparents. Oh, my goodness. Um, they were just a crucial part of my upbringing. You know, I was raised uh, by them and by my parents, and so I was with them every day. And, uh, oh my gosh, they just had a tremendous influence on me um, and on my, you know, on my culture. I mean, mm -hmm. they, they taught me all about my culture. They would, um, they involved me in our Osage Ilonshka dances. Uh, they dressed me at the age of three, and I began, dan began dancing at three years old. And I'm 53 now, so I've been involved in our ceremonial dances for over 50 years. And uh, I'm also a, a lady singer on our committee for the, the Gray Horse Drum. And, uh, but they took me to Native American church meetings, and they just took me, they just involved me in the community. So when there were funerals or people were sick, uh, we would, they would just take me with them. Mm -hmm. So I just grew up uh, learning our Osage ways um, just by their living example. Right. And also the language, were you around the language quite a bit? Like I said, my um, my grandparents were, were uh, both full bloods and they were uh, first language speakers. Mm -hmm. And then my grandmother's sister, Irene Jefferson, they were very close. Uh, with, they were around each other about every day mm -hmm. and they would go somewhere every day. So I, I grew up hearing the language. They would speak it, yeah. Um, what activities did you do for fun around town growing up in Fairfax? Well, we had a, a Osages like to play hand game. So I remember growing up with the hand games, and and we had the uh, the Gray Horse War Mothers Dance. We would attend that, and uh, just really it was community not only in Fairfax and Gray Horse, but also in. Um, the other districts in Hominy and Pahuska. So we go to social dances over there and, and visit friends. And um, um, and my grandparents were involved in the ONOS, Osage Nation organization. Mm -hmm. It was a political organization. So I remember going with them to Leroy Logan's home and uh, Raymond Lastly's home for different meetings. Mm -hmm. So I was around a lot of the elders, you know, their age group. And that was, that was fun for me. Right. Um, what schools did you attend? Well, I went to the Fairfax school K through 12. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I went on to Oklahoma State University. Uh, and like I said, graduated with, from there in 1987 and 1989 with my master's. What was your favorite subject like in grade school? In grade school, um, let me think. Actually, in grade school, I really liked mathematics. Yeah, I know. I didn't, as I got older, I didn't, really didn't, <laughs> but I had fun with numbers back then. That's great. Did you, um, was there anything that kind of foreshadowed your interest in art or having a gallery or even in working in the prevention field? 
Uh, well, let's start with art. So growing up, you know, our clothing is so beautiful. The arts of our clothing, the finger weaving, the ribbon work, mm -hmm. the vibrant colors. So I grew up surrounded by that, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's a heavy influence. And I'm sure that led me to, to own a gallery today. Right. And so in regard to my work in counseling and, and prevention and, um, you know, growing up, you know, I saw lots of, you know, alcoholism in our communities and, uh, and divorce. And so I knew at an early age at 14 that I would become a counselor and mm -hmm. I would get a master's degree because my own folks uh, were getting a divorce at that time. And so I made up my mind then. I said to go and then I achieved it. Wow. Yeah. And so your mom actually went to school too, as you explained, but your, did your dad have a college education as well? He went to college at uh, UCO okay. in Edmond, mm -hmm. um, yeah, years ago. So they were encouraging that you're continuing. Yes, yes, definitely. What led you to um, attend OSU? Well, um, it was close, mm -hmm. and um, really it was the field the family relations and child development. I really um, was drawn to that field there. Who were some of the um, professors that kind of stood out for you? Dr. Kay Murphy was definitely a professor that was uh, uh, someone really important to me. I took five of her classes, and as a master's student, I was her, um, uh, what do you call it? Teaching assistant? Yeah, teaching assistant, uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. So uh, she was a big influence on me. I just really had so much tremendous respect for her, and, and uh, she was a, one of my biggest influences. Wonderful. Um, did you have any other family members who were at OSU at the time when you did your undergrad? Or uh, No, but, you know, my sister also went to Oklahoma State University and also has a bachelor's in uh, family relations and child development. Is she older or younger? She's six years older. Okay. Mm -hmm. I forgot to ask about siblings. How how many were you? Uh, there's two of us, and I'm okay. the baby. My sister Denise is six years older, and my brother Gil is nine years older. Okay. Um, did you know? It sounds like you knew from the time you arrived how to pick your major, basically. Or did you have to be kind of? guided through the process. All right, let me think back. Um, you knew you wanted to go into counseling, you mentioned. Yes. It's, it's been a few years back. <laughs> um, I think I thought about the allied health field at first, and then I decided upon uh, family relations and child development. Mm -hmm. But yes, I did, did know early on I wanted to go into the counseling field, and that was a better fit for me and what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Aside from your class and your major, did you have another favorite class while you were there? Let me see. Um, well, I was involved, this isn't a class, but I was involved in the Indian Club okay. uh, on campus. And uh, Dr. Pete Kozer was the counselor. And uh, I really enjoyed uh, having him in my life, too. I'd go and visit with him and was involved in the student activities and the powwow and um, that was kind of a highlight, too, in my uh, time there at OSU. Great. Do you still go to the powwow sometimes? Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do. Um, what buildings did you have your classes in? Well, at that time, now it's called Human and Environmental Sciences. At that time, it was called Home Economics. So it was in those buildings. Um, I believe that was just the name of it then. Right, Yeah. right. What was the rest of the learning environment on campus like in your undergrad time? Um, what do you mean? Were you, did other students in other fields seem to study as hard as you guys did? or? Well... Did you get the impression students were pretty serious about their studies or... I know was I was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really recall about the other folks, but <laughs> I was. Where did you live? I lived, I had an apartment up on Perkins Road. 
Um, from the beginning, your first no, year? No, I think I was in the, I was in the dorms, I think maybe one year, and then apartments after, you know, after that. What was the dorm experience like? Um, goodness, it's been a while back. Uh, I'm sure it was positive. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a few years back. <laughs> um, how about um, transportation? Did I had a car, and I rode my bike a lot, too. Yeah, the bike was key. Right. Yeah, I lived on Perkins Road, uh, I think at Apple Creek Apartments, and then I would, I would ride a lot to campus and thought nothing of it. That's wonderful. Um, how about um, any other organizations you're involved with besides the Native American Student Organization? Um, that was my main one. Okay. Yeah. Did you eat meals on campus? When I was in the dorm, I did, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you recall about any campus tradition? Well, of course, homecoming stands out, you know, with all the, the floats and the parade and everything. So that would be a big one that right. stands out. Right, Yeah. Did, did you help with any? Well, I wasn't involved in any sororities, mm -hmm. so not really. But just being able to go and watch the yeah. parade. Yeah. Talk about your favorite place on campus. Uh, probably Hideaway Pizza. <laughs> off campus. <laughs> A block off campus. <laughs> no, I'm teasing. Um, the Student Union. I love the Student Union. All the activity in the shops. And uh, I eat there a lot, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did you attend many sporting events? Yeah, uh, the football games, the basketball games, mainly. Yeah, okay. yeah. Any particularly memorable games? Uh, well, Mike Gundy was playing back then. Yeah, it's been a, it's been about thirty years ago. <laughs> yeah, I think Marcus Dupree and yeah, so it was fun. Tell me a little bit about dating. Back when I was in college? Yeah. Okay. Um, goodness. Um, well, I was dating somebody from Norman, so I would uh, <laughs> travel to Norman back, back and forth quite a bit. So an OU student or just somebody who lived in Norman? Uh, let's see. Was she, I can't remember if she was still a student or she had already graduated. It's been 30 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of traveling, though, like yes. you said. Um, what were some of the popular places you noticed that people like to hang out uh, with their dates on campus? Oh, Hideaway, of course. Hideaway, and then going yeah. to the movies. Yeah. You know, and that was, that was always, I always still love to go to the movies. Um, those were two of my favorite things. How often did you go home while you were in school? Um, I went home fairly often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it wasn't too far, and uh, um, my grandmother was still alive, and she was so she was so important to me. So I'd go home quite often. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, were you also working part time, or? Yeah, um, I was working part time. I know I worked for like a, a pizza delivery place, and um, some other. That's, that was the main. The main job I think I had for a while, mm -hmm. besides in a graduate school, I was a teaching assistant and a research assistant. So, right. Um, what are your memories of the library? Uh, well, it's not like it is today. There was <laughs> it was pretty old fashioned. <laughs> the card catalog <laughs> and <laughs> and such. <laughs> Spending a lot of hours in the library. Right. Yeah, a lot of time there. And how about um, Theta Pond? Oh yeah, oh, it's such a beautiful, peaceful place. Yeah, the campus is just beautiful at OSU. So yeah, I spend a lot of time there too, just <laughs> hanging out. Um, <clears throat> how about memories of the town of Stillwater? Well, it certainly has grown since I was there. Um, but like I said, I, I rode my bike a lot in Stillwater and uh, it was just a, a nice, kind of peaceful, for me, uh, community to be in. So, 
I enjoy Stillwater, and I still do. And you've been back to the library, I take it, and back to homecomings and things? Uh, I haven't been to the library lately. You um, need to come. I do need to come, that's for sure. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, and gosh, and the, everything has changed so much with the new stadium and boom pickings, and mm -hmm. it's quite fabulous. I'm really proud when I go back to see all, all that has changed. It's just pretty fantastic. How was your graduation day? What are your memories of that? Oh, wow. <clears throat> um, very positive. You know, my grandmother was there to see me graduate. and uh, This was both undergrad and master's? or This was my... Uh, undergraduate that I'm okay. thinking of in 1987. Okay. So my, you know, my, my parents, my family were there and uh, it was just, it was a big day. It was a, it was a big day and they had a reception for me out to like the Holiday Inn or something uh, and that was fun. But oh, it was, fun. It, it was a memorable little day. And then uh, upon graduation, how did you use your degree? Well, um, I was, I had an internship at Edmund Family Services, um, and so they hired me. They had they kind of created a position for me. I was a uh, children of alcoholics director mm -hmm. of a prevention program, and so we, it was a grant. I would go into the school system in Edmond and run support groups. And at the agency, uh, I ran support groups, and I did counseling, family counseling, individual counseling. Mm -hmm. I did a a CAP program. It was a program for children who got in trouble with the, the law for the first mm -hmm. time and do education on drugs and alcohol and prevention. And uh, then I just do community, community awareness, mm -hmm. write articles for the newspaper. So I did that for about four years. What were the biggest challenges of that work? Oh, goodness. Well, in um, alcoholic family systems, there's a lot of denial, and the you know the three basic rules are don't talk, don't trust, don't feel, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I'm thinking back to that time. Um, I guess the most rewarding part of that was with the children of letting them know that they had a safe place to come, that they could they could vent their feelings and they could mm -hmm. learn other coping mechanisms, you know, and it was a safe place to, to talk about what was going on in their families mm -hmm. and to get some relief mm -hmm. and to learn um, some life skills. Mm -hmm. And you were also involved with the Osage Language program for a yeah. while. Yeah. Like I said, I worked in uh, with the Oklahoma Early Intervention Program, Center Start, for about 14 years, and I was a technical supervisor. And I was living in Oklahoma City, and I just had a, a real draw to come back home. I was coming back home a lot anyway, and it's about you know 120 miles, coming home for uh, community activities, and uh, I've always still I've always stayed very involved with our ceremonial dances, mm -hmm. and we have community meetings. Uh, and I started an elders group where I'd pull together, uh, invite elders, and we'd come and talk about, talk about different topics, about the Osage cradle board ceremony and different things. And so I just found myself on the weekends coming home all the time. So I just made a decision that mm -hmm. I would just move home. Mm -hmm. And so when I did, I transferred to the K County Health Department uh, and worked part-time for about a year. And then I um, got on with the, the Osage Nation, with the Osage uh, language program. And so eventually I just went full time with the language for about four and a half years. How about the challenges and rewards of that? Um, well, I, I'm a people person. I love the people. So of course the students and the community, that was, that was a tremendous reward. And so our language, um, they considered it like a, a dead language because there's no first, uh, first language speakers anymore. So it's a, it's a tremendous commitment mm -hmm. to learn the language. And uh, uh, so, gosh, I was there for four and a half years. And it was, it was I guess the challenge was to get people to, to stay with it, you mm -hmm. know, because there's so many other 
uh, things in our lives that, that are busy and, and it's time to commit to that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but anyway, it was a good experience, very good experience. What do you think your biggest accomplishment was? It, it would be uh, starting the facility in Fairfax. There was no, uh, there was no language building or program there. Mm -hmm. And so I helped build that program and build the facility. And uh, so that would be uh, the most positive, greatest thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, I was able to put it, have a, a mural of Yannicka Fields put in that language center. So that will stand there forever. That's so, wonderful. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Showing the art too. <laughs> yeah, yes. Well, what gave you the idea to open your own store? Well, I started out um, uh, over on Kahika Street. There was a business incubator where you could just start out putting a few things um, in a in a, like a little ten by ten stall. And a friend of mine would just tell me about it, and I thought, oh, I'm gonna put some stuff in there. Well, it started growing tremendously. You know, so it was just kind of like a, a it was kind of gathering, like a booth, like a booth. Yeah, and so I put some things in there and um, some Native American items, and people loved it. And so were they your own personal things that you owned, or you? Gosh, got some family members, or they were my personal things. Um, Yeah, it was just, I can't even remember back then what I put in there. It's been a, it's been a while, but anyway, there were, I'm sure it was like shawls and beadwork and different mm -hmm. things. And so, and then it just kept expanding. And so, uh, so it started from there until, um, it, it grew into my own shop, basically, yeah. And you opened... I think the Cedar Chest, which was the first yes. shop in 2005. It wasn't 2005. Okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, this is 2016, so it was about 2009. Okay. That was in the business incubator of Townmaker Square. Okay. And so it must have been about 2010. And... Actually, it was here. We were here. We Same started, location? Yes. Okay. Yes, we started here, and then we heard that Reed Drummond was coming to town. <laughs> and you might need to explain, actually, for some viewers, who Reed Drummond is. Okay, Reed Drummond's the pioneer woman, and she has a food network program and a huge, tremendous following. And she has cookbooks, and she has um, uh, a whole mercantile items of, of dishes and, and aprons and all kind of all kind of things. So anyway, um, so we moved, after being a couple years here, we moved over to Kahika Street with a cedar chest. And uh, um, that's where we were for a number, for until uh, about 20 months ago. And we had an accident with asbestos at the time. Oh. Yeah. There was a roof accident. Uh, yes. That ruined all of our items. So that was uh, oh. very <laughs> unfortunate and uh, devastating, really. So we had to start from scratch all over again. And that's when um, we moved here uh, mm -hmm. 20 months ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And with asbestos, I don't know, did you... Was there a special way that they had to handle everything too, or? Yeah, they had a hazmat team come oh, in okay. and clean and attempt to clean up the building, mm -hmm. and then, um, but all the textiles and all that was ruined and damaged. So that was that was just a goner. Yeah. yeah. And you had as well as newer things. You probably had older vintage. Oh yeah, definitely. Things. Yeah, cradle boards with beadwork, mm -hmm. Osage cradle mm -hmm. boards with beadwork, and finger weaving items and fans and. Yeah, irreplaceable. Yes, yeah. truly. Yeah. yeah, so that was difficult, extremely. How did you go about um, rebuilding? How did you? Yeah, that's a good question. Keep going on. That's a very good question. Um, well, life goes on, and so what I I did with very very little items, um, I went started setting up at uh, powwows 
and uh, there's a place in Ponca City uh, that has vendors. And so I just slowly started with a few. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had about a shoebox full of items uh, to put out there. And um, and cause I went to the three shows, I think. I went to the one in Ponca City, or two shows. And then I went to ICOT, had a show in Tulsa. And a lot of times there's deadlines to get into the shows. And so, but then sometimes people will cancel. So I just went with my little shoebox of items. I didn't even have a um, tablecloth. And, but you know when you're when you're in the business, the Indian store business, you, you know you have other friends. So I get there, and some people had not been able to get in the show because they were they were unfortunately had a felony convictions, and so they couldn't be part of the show. And I said, "Well, I don't have any felony convictions." <laughs> so uh, so they let me in, they let me in. Uh, it was just a fluke that yeah I know. It was just a fluke. And so I got into the show, and a friend of mine that I had bought things from before, he loaned me a tablecloth. And I set up. And uh, anyway, some some friends, uh, Ford Griggs, I was meeting them, by, by, meeting them that day buying some art. And, uh, and they said, would you be interested in consigning some of our uh, high-end Native American items and artwork? And I said, sure. And so they were a tremendous help in restarting my business because I took some of their items and was able to put them on consignment and, uh, and start over. Wow. And, and then yeah, I was able to build from there. Yeah. You lost the inventory you had purchased. And oh, so yes. you're just really starting from. Yes. And we, and we had insurance, too. But um, uh, there was, what do you call it? Loopholes in the system saying that uh, asbestos wasn't covered. Yeah. So, yeah. So it was very difficult. And I assume your shoebox, was that mostly jewelry? It was jewelry. Yeah. It was jewelry. Yeah. How, um, who is your primary, um, like, clientele? And has that changed um, since... Since you switch shops, um, my primary clientele, I would say about seventy percent are Native American, probably about thirty percent non-Native American. Um, but I think it's going to change dr dramatically with the influx of people coming to town with with Redrum and opening. Uh, there'll be a lot of tourists. They're expecting like 1,500 people a day or more coming. My yeah. goodness. Yeah. So, but, you know, we uh, do the specialized clothing. We can make clothing from head to toe for folks. But I've really kept on, too, with a lot of the vintage-type things, which I really love. I really um, enjoy carrying those items, too. Wonderful. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have to ask you, when they were filming August Osage County, uh -huh. <laughs> did you have any encounters, or what was that like? Well, actually, some of the the crew the from the set came over, and they purchased some things from me. I'm not surprised. Yeah, they they purchased an umbilical cord fetish, which the um, the housekeeper wore throughout the movie. Mm. And they also purchased a uh, AC Bluegel uh, vintage iced tea set. And I didn't see that in the movie, but they purchased it for the set. So, Wonderful. yeah, so that was cool. But I loved it they, that they bought that um, uh, beaded umbilical cord finish and that it was shown throughout right. the movie. So that was a real thrill. Right. <laughs> for a town its size, really, Pahuska, I think, has quite a lot of artistic activity. So yeah. how would you describe the arts community here? Growing. Definitely growing. Uh, we had festivities this past weekend. Uh, arts in the Osage. Uh, they had an art show at the First National Bank the Osage Nation owns. So that, And I went over there. That was quite fabulous. And they had a fundraising event uh, for a sculpture that's being made of Ben Johnson. So that was uh, Saturday evening. 
And then the Osage Museum had a um, um, movie night on Friday night with uh, food vendors. So the art show at the at the bank and all these other things have really... And I hear there's more galleries coming to town, too. That'll be great. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's, you know, going to be a thriving art community here in Pahuska, Oklahoma. That's exciting. How do um, you think attending OSU and earning your degree has impacted your life? Well, I just think it made, it's made all the difference in the world, you know, continued education. Um, it's given me opportunities to, to help people um, to do community service and um, give me the confidence to follow my passions. You know, because I made the decision to be a counselor when I was 14 years old, you know. And then uh, I listened to my heart and knew it was time to come home and, and uh, help my community at home. And, uh, but, you know, going to school at OSU, was, it's just, it was so much. It was so much. And, I, and from time to time, I go back and, and uh, visit with people there in the community. And, and uh, another person that really had a tremendous influence on me was Sherry Davidson. She was a child development specialist at the Payne County Health Department. And she would come into our classes and speak to us. And, and she's also Native American. She's Cherokee. Uh, but she was a big influence on my career, too. Right. And do people around here know about your OSU connection? Um, yes, I think a lot of them do. Yes, I've, I ran for Co Osage Nation Congress in the past, and so, of course, that was part of my um, credentials to, right. to run for, the, for office. Yeah. <clears throat> what advice would you give to um, OSU students today? Uh, my advice would be to uh, stay true to themselves. Um to never give up and to stay with it, you know, complete that degree, complete the second degree and, uh, and to serve, serve other people. And in a way your store is kind of continuing like, that tradition. Yeah. I mean, you know, we have this big table set up and so it's also kind of like a community center. We have a lot of people come in to visit, drink coffee. Uh, talk about things that are going on in the community and in their lives. And then we have some people, I love it when people come in, she goes, you know, I'm just coming in just to get inspired. Wow. I know. I love that. that and then I had a lady come in the other day. She made two steps into the front door, and she just spilled her heart out. She goes, you know, I just really needed to talk, and thank you for listening. You know. That's, that's a blessing to be in that position. So. Yeah. Are there other OSU graduates in Pahuska that you're connected to? I mean, not in Pahuska, yeah, in Pahuska or, or nearby Fairfax or any. Well, connected to my sister and my mother. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm sure there's lots of OS, OSU graduates um, here in the vicinity. Yeah. Uh, Wilson Pipes Den. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, what should we know about Pahuska or about Osage County in general that's important to know? Well, Pahuska is one of the three Osage districts, uh, Pahuska, Hominy, and Gray Horse. And, uh, you know, we continue on with our ceremonial dances every June. And uh, that's pretty much our cultural heart here. Uh, we have the beautiful Osage Museum with, you know, lots of um, beautiful paintings and, and uh, Osage clothing. And we also have the Historical Museum, which also has many uh, Osage artifacts in it, too. And it's a community that's, that's really thriving. You know, with back to the language program, uh, gains are being made to do more. Um, more and more with that program uh, so it's continuing to grow and to thrive and 
recently the Osage Nation bought back uh, our land from a Ted Turner. I saw that. So, um, let's see how, how many, I forget how many acres it was, but it's a significant amount. So that was huge. So it's really, uh, here in Osage County, not only is it Huska, but it's part of Homley and Fairfax uh, that we bought that our own land back. So that's tremendous. It is. What do you think it is about OSU that sparks loyalty to the school? Hmm. Well, to me, it just had a smaller community type feel to it. I was able to connect people um, on a personal basis, like with my uh, in my department and family relations and child development, I was able to have a uh, close uh, personal relationship with my professors mm -hmm. that was meaningful. Mm -hmm. I didn't feel like this lost. Mm -hmm. I felt connected and I felt connected with um, the Native American Student Association and Dr. Pete Kozer because I had a personal relationship. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's just my experience, you know, and that's why I feel a loyalty to OSU. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and coming from a small town. Exactly. That's an important, important quality. Well, is there anything else you'd like to talk about that we didn't cover today? Maybe just tell us a few of the artists you handle. Okay, I would love to do that. I'd <laughs> love to do that. Um, Lord Postopa is one of the uh, artists that we, we carry. He's also Osage, and he's a friend of mine. And... Um, Many of the people just really love his work and can relate to it and just really, really enjoy it. So um, he is one. And then we carry some uh, contemporary pieces like mm -hmm. Brent Lerner from Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. And we have some pieces uh, from Osage artist uh, Gina Gray, who's no longer with us, mm -hmm. but uh, she's very uh, popular and a favorite yes. in our gallery. And of the jewelry pieces, um, Tanya June Raphael, she's a Navajo artist. Uh, we carry her along with Jolene Bird, who's San Domingo. We really enjoy carrying her artwork. And uh, we have, you know, vintage pieces of, of Osage finger weaving mm -hmm. uh, with some uh, unknown artists in that area. And then we have ribbon work from um, uh, Georgiana Robertson who also used to have an Indian store, uh, her and her family years ago. So we just carry a, um, a number of artists here. Anything by Anita Fields? Or? I do have one piece by Anita Fields. Thank hard you for that. Get, hard to get. <laughs> yes, yes, of a, a ceramic Osage woman in, in Osage clothing. How neat. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Dennis. Thank you.